right, guys, it's Robin back at you one more again for a part two today. And I hope everybody's doing good on this terrific Tuesday. I know I'm doing blessed and highly favored and hope the same thing for you. If this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome. Namaste, love and light to you and many blessings are yet to come. And if you can, can you please like and subscribe, even hit that bell so you know when I'm about to upload my next video. And at the end, if you resonate, please drop a comment. I love positive feedback. And if this is your returning time, subs. Thank you for the support. Much love and light to you and many blessings are yet to come for you. Today my video is about Twin Flame 101 story time. It is about me telling you about the first time I knew about my medium gift. Like I love watching uh, Teresa Caputo when I did watch TV. Um, it was like Long Island Medium and I like to watch Tyler Henry on uh, Hollywood Medium. And I always love the, their gifts, how they're able to do it, like, automatic, you know. And, you know, I hear about some of the stuff that they, you know, is supposed to be fake or whatever like that. But, you know, that's another story. They ain't got nothing to do with me. I just only can talk about myself. But it's just about this time. It was, like, a couple of, a couple of years, probably, like, a year I've been in the South. And I had to go get me and my, my girl's eyes checked. And we went to the Oxford optical place and there was this really nice woman that you know she was helping us and assisting us with the you know the you know picking of the glasses and you know trying to get the measurements and stuff like that and we were sitting there and I hear hey you know hey I know you hear me and I'm like oh god and I'm looking around like I don't see nobody talking you know, you know, looking at me and talking and it was just like really crazy. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know, and I see this woman. I'm just trying to smile at her. But you can look in her eyes with me being an empath. You can pretty much tell when somebody's trying to fake a smile. It's not like she was being fake, but you can tell she was really going through something at the time. Like she really looked broken and I felt so bad for her and I can feel it. It was that strong. And then it's just like, I hear somebody like, hey, hey, I know you hear me. Please. Can you please talk to her? I've been trying to get her attention for the last few days can you please talk to her and I'm like oh my gosh you know I'm just like you know and it felt like with Patrick Swayze with Whoopi Goldberg on Ghost like if he he was gonna probably follow me home if I didn't sit up here and get this woman's attention and it was like I'm like okay I'll go ahead and talk to her and see you know I just don't want this woman going off on me because we were in public so I really didn't want to embarrass her or try to hurt her or anything because you can really tell she was really trying to grin and bear it for that day so next thing you know um and the sad thing is my adopted father was with me at the time and when we were when we were getting ready to finish and I asked the lady, you know, is it okay if I talk to you real quick? I, you know, I got to talk to you. And she's like, okay. You know, she kind of looked confused in a minute. And, you know, I pushed her aside and I'm like, look, this got to be private. I can't talk to you about this, in, you know, in front of everybody. So she was really confused. And I'm like, I'm not trying to scare you or anything. Oh, and today I forgot to tell you guys, I'm listening to um, Cool Breeze uh, instrumental. It's, it's about R&B and everything. Um, I'll put that on the link down below. Um... And we went to go talk, and um, and I told her, you know, I'm not trying to scare you or anything, but there is somebody trying to get your attention that said they've been trying to get your attention for the last few days or whatever, and just, you know, and they're really worried about you. And she looked at me like, okay. And then I hear him say, she looked at something of mine today. She looked at something of mine this morning. And I said, did you pick up something that you, somebody you've been really thinking about, did you pick up something of theirs? Did you cook like a favorite meal or you smelt their cologne or it was a piece of, piece of clothing or something? And I just started seeing her eyes water. I'm like, oh my God, please don't start crying. And please, I wasn't trying to make you cry. I wasn't trying to hurt you. And then she was just like, it's my son, it's my son. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then she was like, he died. And she, you know, and at first, you know, she had to catch herself because I felt her being vulnerable. And I told her, you know, she was like, so what does he look like? And I had to sit there for a minute. And then she felt this chill. She had moved. And I said, um, he's touching you right now. And I had to describe her, describe him to her. And I said, you know, he's stocky. You know, he looks like a, a quarterback football player. Very handsome. You know, got a goatee and hair, short haircut like he just got his haircut. And she just started flipping out, flipping out. And then she ran. She's like, hold on just a minute. And then 
she was just like, she showed me a picture and she was like, which one is it? And I pointed to him. I said, is this him right here? And she just hugged me and, you know, and I told her, I said, look, he's been trying to get in touch with you for the last few days. And he wants you to know that he is okay, but he is more worried about you and he cannot, you know, he cannot pass on unless he knows you're okay. But he just wants to know, you know, let you know he's fine. And she got ready to ask a question and he told me no. So all of a sudden I started getting these flashes of things. I'm not going to go into content about that, but it, you know, it kind of disturbed me because I started seeing bits and pieces of his last moments. And that was very heartbreaking to me. And I told her he did not want her to worry about that. When it's time for her to find out what happened, she will. But right now it's not a good thing. And I don't know what would she was you know, thinking about in her head or contemplating to do, but I knew it was very dreadful and very heartbreaking. And it's just like with the empath, you know, you, you take on that energy that somebody's giving you. And it's just like, you know, I wanted to take her pain away so bad. And I, you know, and she grabbed my hand and started shaking. And it's like the receptionist is like looking at us and people are drawing a crowd like, oh my God, you know, I'm embarrassed. But I felt so good at that point. And I was just like, you know, I usually don't do that, you know, and I usually, when I see stuff like that, I usually, you know, unless the spirits they really are that strong and really feel like they have a message that they have to send, I had to tell her that. And it was just like, you just don't know how much you, you brighten my, you know, you brighten my day. And I said, I can really see that you are hurting. And, you know, even though you were smiling, you, you were very nice and very, you know, forthcoming with, you know, doing your customer service. You know, I just, that was just something I felt like I had to do. And plus, he, he was not going to leave me alone unless I told you this. And so, you know, I just gave her a big hug. And I know my dad, my adopted dad jumped on my case. Like, why did you do that? Why did you do that? You shouldn't do that. That's, you know, that stuff is crazy. You can really hurt somebody. And I'm just like, I wasn't trying to hurt her. But obviously, her son was trying to get in touch with her. And he, you know, he told her, you know, there's days that, you know, he's been trying to get in touch with her and I didn't mind doing that. I actually helped this woman and I said, for what the feelings I got from her, I knew I actually did her a favor. So I did more good than harm. So I told her, I said, anytime you feel a chill or, you know, a certain saying that he said it comes up or, you know, you glance at his picture out of the blue, that's just him trying to communicate with you, knowing that he will always be there for you. So, you know, that really made me feel good. So, you know, that was my story time for today. And I felt really good about that. But the crazy thing is, two days later, we were watching the news. And they were talking about this guy who got killed. They found him in his car. And my my girls were like, Mommy, Mommy, you know, that's the lady that, that helped us with our glasses that you had helped that day. And did not realize it was her, her son's one-year anniversary. So that really warmed my heart that I was able to do that for her. And I felt so good. So, you know, it's like, guys, it's like sometimes, you know, we wear so many daggone hats. And I didn't even know that I had a gift like that. But it was just like certain things that came up when I was little. That there are certain places I wouldn't go that I would see like little flashes of things when I was little. And, you know, my mom and them knew I loved castles and stuff like that when we were in Germany. So I like to explore, you know, different buildings and stuff like that because I found them so interesting. But there's just certain places I would not go. And I'm like, no, bad things happen in there. So I'm not going. So that was all I pretty much had for my story time. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And, you know, please drop a line. Even give me a thumbs up and, you know, hit that notification bell. And if you haven't, just like and subscribe. And I will talk to you later. Peace and be wild. Well.